Anecdotal evidence suggests that gum moths are in decline in parts of their natural range. Are they in decline and what might be causing it? Welcome to One Minute Bugs. There are two species commonly known as gum moths, the emperor gum moth and the Helena gum moth. The emperor gum moth occurs in the top end of the Northern Territory and in the eastern mainland states. The Helena gum moth is found in southeastern Australia, including Tasmania, and is also found in southwest Western Australia. The adult moths are large, spectacular insects with eye spots on their wings. The eye spots on the hind wings are particularly prominent. The moths can have a wingspan of up to about 150 millimetres, so they are pretty big insects. The emperor gum moth can vary in colour from grey to light brown to reddish brown, while the Helena gum moth is brown to orange brown. The two species can be confused as adult moths. The main difference is a white or grey triangle which appears on the four wings of the emperor gum moth but is absent on the Helena gum moth. Adult moths occur during spring and summer and they may be attracted to house lights at night. It's easy to distinguish between males and females by looking at their antennae. Males have spectacular feathery antennae and the females have thinner, less flamboyant antennae. The adult moths only live for a week or two because they don't feed. They don't have functional mouth parts. Their only role is to mate and lay eggs. The eggs are creamy and oval shaped, about two millimetres long, and they are usually laid in small groups on gum tree leaves. I took this shot nearly 30 years ago, and it's still one of my favourite images. Young larvae are quite dark and not particularly colourful, but mature larvae certainly are. Mature larvae are very large, up to about 100 millimetres long, and it's at this stage that you can distinguish one species from another. Mature emperor gum moth larvae are blue-green on the top surface and yellowish-green everywhere else. They also have prominent growths known as scoli or tubercles, which are either orange or red with purple or blue tips. They are very colourful caterpillars. Now for a couple more of my favourite images from 30 years ago. As you can see, they have really cute abdominal prolegs. I explain what those are in Bug Basics number two, I think it is. You can go and check that out if you like. Mature Helena gum moth larvae are bright green in colour and covered in short white bristles with only a few short scoli. Both species have a yellow or cream stripe down each side. The larvae of both species feed on the foliage of various gum trees, hence their common name, gum moths. They also feed on a couple of introduced trees, most notably the peppercorn tree. Despite their spectacular colours and large size, these larvae can be quite difficult to see on, um, amongst dense gum tree foliage. Larvae pupate in a tough silken cocoon which may be cemented to a twig or branch or bark of a tree, perhaps where the larva has been feeding, but not necessarily. I found this Helena gum moth caterpillar trundling along on the ground. I thought it was looking for a tree trunk to pupate on, so I put it on what I thought was a suitable tree. Nah, straight back onto the ground for some more trundling. Silly me. Eventually, the caterpillar burrowed under a pile of cut bracken and pupated there. Here it is. A moth may emerge from this cocoon next spring, or it may not emerge for another year or two. Now to their decline. Here in Victoria, it is said that there aren't as many emperor gum moths as there once were. Often people are thinking back to how they used to find them as kids, but now they don't see them so much anymore. It could be for a number of reasons. One of the theories is it is predation by European wasps, which arrived in Victoria in the late 1970s. That's possible, but I also hear the moth is in decline in areas where the European wasp doesn't occur. Perhaps it's because we were more observant as kids and were more likely to be actively looking for caterpillars. I know I used to haunt local parks looking for caterpillars on peppercorn trees. Mm, okay, that probably doesn't surprise you. 
They were pretty easy to find on peppercorn tree foliage. Peppercorn trees have gone out of favour, so there probably aren't as many of them around as there used to be. In fact, the peppercorn tree is regarded as an environmental weed in Victoria, New South Wales, South Australia and the Northern Territory. As I mentioned earlier, the caterpillars are hard to find on mature gum trees. As an example, 15 years ago I could easily find them on a couple of sapling gum trees that I'd planted. But now, all those years later, I'd need binoculars to see them. And even then, you know, you'd be struggling amongst all that dense foliage. The decline or apparent decline could be because of any of those reasons that I've mentioned. Um, and I've left some out, you know, like habitat loss and climate change. But no one really knows what's happening. Then again, insects in general appear to be in decline across the world, so perhaps it's not surprising. Have they declined where I live? Some people suggest yes, but it's difficult for me to judge. I've only been in this area for about 20 years, and I find the most years, both species. But then again, that's easy for me to do because I'm out and about looking for insects all the time. It's over to you now. Have you seen gum moths or their caterpillars in your area lately? When was the last time you saw gum moths or their caterpillars? Please drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to watch a video about another interesting Australian moth, check out my video on the Courage on Bag Moth. Thanks for watching.